What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome, I'm Rissa Bean. In today's video, I will be giving you my top tips to succeed in college, especially if you are a science major. I specifically majored in biology and personally, it took me a long time to figure out what works and what didn't work for me as far as getting the grades that I wanted to in college. Once I found a routine that worked for me and I started implementing those throughout the year, I started getting the grades that I wanted and successfully passed all of my science and biology courses as well as do well in my pre-nursing courses ultimately got me into my nursing program. So if you could use some tips for a successful semester from organization, exams, assignments, then keep on watching. Just a heads up, some of the tips that I'm going to give may be things you've never thought of or maybe things that seem so simple but definitely make a difference in your college career as far as grades, GPA, and habits. So the first tip that I have is make sure you read your syllabi thoroughly and completely when you first get them. When you're going through, read it and then also jot down important dates such as exams, assignments, big projects, meetings, anything that you see in the syllabi that you think is important, make sure you're writing that down in a calendar. I normally wrote mine down on a monthly overview as well as a weekly overview and it's also helpful to use different colors. Whatever's going to make you remember or stand out, if you want to color code exams one color, assignments one color, um, readings another color, I definitely also wrote down readings as well. So anything that's going to help you out, make sure you write everything down in a planner and I even used to put my exams in my phone as well. So I wouldn't put my assignments in my phone but I would definitely put my exams in my phone that way I could have that on hand. Speaking of planners, I am actually designing a digital planner. It will be digital, however, I will include a printout version. All of those details will be included with the planner. If I have it done by the time this video goes up, then it will definitely be in the bio. If it's not done, it will be put in the bio as soon as it is done. Be sure to like this video, that way you can always come back to it and have a link to that planner. My next tip is to keep your class schedule handy. I always wrote mine down on a physical piece of paper as well as kept mine in my phone. You're able to sync your laptop to your phone, especially if you have Google Calendar. So it may be quicker for you to type everything up in Google and just sync it to your phone. That way whenever you're out on the go and if you are making plans or you just need to refresh your, especially in the very beginning of the semester when you're still learning your schedule and getting into that routine, you always have it handy physically and digitally. My next tip is to create a study schedule when it's time for exams. You want to give yourself ample time to study for exams, that way you don't end up cramming all the information the night before. So I typically give myself about a week exactly before the exam, if not more. I divide the content among each day before the exam, that way I can cover each topic, but not all together if that makes sense. I don't want to study all 10 chapters, maybe 3 days before the exam. I'm just not going to remember everything. Something that I would do, if I have a chapter exam 1 through 10 and it's on a Thursday, then I will start studying the Thursday prior to the exam. So that Thursday prior, I might only study chapters 1 and 2. That may entail rereading my notes, maybe listening to lectures or pinpointing parts and lectures that I'm still a little bit confused on. I'm writing down questions that I may need clarification for when I go to my next lecture before the exam. I'm rereading any text that I need to. Everything that I'm doing is only for chapters one and two. Then on Friday, I will study chapter three and four and I will do the same thing. I'm only looking at three and four, making any connections that I might have missed, any details, any questions. That's what I'm doing on Friday. And then on Saturday, I'm studying chapters five and six and so forth and so on. By the time Monday rolls around, I'm studying chapters nine and 10. So the next two days, Tuesday and Wednesday, I will split my chapters up, maybe one through five on Tuesday, six through 10 on Wednesday. And at this point, I'm just reviewing. I have did all my detailed studying in the days before that. So now I'm just reviewing my notes, making sure I can recall everything that I need to, making sure I know all the details that I need to know for the exam. So Tuesday and Wednesday should be really chill days. Studying like this should give you extra time to either study for other exams, have free time to relax, or even just get done your other assignments. That way you're not cramming everything right before your exam and you just feel like you're a jumbled mess. 
My next tip goes along with the previous tip that I just gave you. Just how we made a schedule for exams, we're gonna make a schedule for really big assignments, projects, or in general, if you wanna do it for all of your assignments, that works too. You don't wanna get stuck writing a 10 page research paper for your biology class while you have a chemistry exam the next day. And so you're stuck doing an all nighter because you didn't use your time wisely. So just like you made a schedule, a study schedule, you wanna do the same thing for your assignments and projects. And typically the way I do them, I like to get my things done early. So if I have a paper, if I have a project, especially if it's not a group project, I'm getting everything done out the way, especially when I have exams coming. And you're well aware of your exams coming because you already wrote down all of your exam dates, all of your assignments, and you're checking your planner daily and making these schedules weekly. So you shouldn't be surprised or bombarded when you have three exams and a paper and a product due in one week. Another tip that I have is to make sure you take your notes digitally and diligently. So what I mean by this is I do not suggest taking handwritten notes in college. Your professor is speaking at a relatively fast pace and if you're like me, I need very detail-oriented notes. That way when I go back and I'm looking at them, I know exactly what's going on. For me, really short-handed notes don't work because I feel like I miss details or when I'm going back, I just can't make the connection between my notes because it's just so shorthand. So if you are in the class where they provide a PowerPoint for each lecture, what I suggest is downloading the PowerPoint and typing in the notes sections as the professor goes on for each slide. That way you know exactly what was said about each topic that's covered in the lecture and it's easy to refer back to and expand on the notes that were already given in the PowerPoint. If there isn't a PowerPoint, then I would just type in a Word document and make sure that you are typing little headers. That way you know exactly what the topic is. And when you're referring back to your notes, you know when one topic ends and the next one begins. I also recommend recording your lectures. If your lecture isn't recorded or if you don't have a PowerPoint to go, I would definitely record the lecture, especially if it's a science lecture. So there's a lot of little details or different processes that you typically cover in these classes. Recording your lecture is very handy that way when you are reviewing your notes. If you have any questions, you're able to go back and listen or what I suggest is I suggest listening to the whole recording again once the class is over and adding to the notes that you took during lecture. That way you're adding any details you might have missed and making those connections. I always record it just using the voice memo app right on my iPhone or if I had my iPad in class, I would use my iPad as well. Although I did say I do not suggest taking notes handwritten, I do suggest having paper and pen or pencil handy. If you're taking science classes or STEM classes in general, you notice that you will probably have to draw a lot of diagrams if a PowerPoint is not provided or handouts aren't provided for you. So you want to be able to draw these diagrams out as a professor draws them. That way you can refer back to them when you're reviewing your notes at a later time. Once I finish typing my notes in a Word document and I've re-listened to the lecture and I've added all the details that I want, I do print my notes from a Word document. That way I can go through, highlight any concepts that I'm still having trouble with. I can write down questions that I may have and write down any notes for later dates when I'm using them to study for my exam. When you go to class, I would suggest sitting within the first five rows. When I actually went to college orientation, they had a saying, it was front row 4.0. And I thought it was the cheesiest thing ever, but I did find that the closer I sat to the front, the more I was forced to pay attention because you're right there. You hear everything, it's louder. You're not distracted by people in the back, people coming in late. It was rare that I sat in the front row. I didn't, sat, I didn't sit in the front row because I would use a text sometimes, not gonna lie. I would sit maybe in like the fourth or fifth row, sometimes the third row. That's what I was comfortable with. So by no means am I telling you to sit front row every single time, especially because in very large lecture halls when you have over 100 students, the first couple of rows are extremely crowded. So get there early, sit in the front row, well, the first couple of rows, and you'll be surprised how much more you pay attention compared to if you're sitting in the very back of the lecture hall. And last but not least, make sure you are going to class. Even if you wake up late and you're already 30 minutes late, go to class anyway. When I was first starting college, if I was late, I definitely wouldn't go to class because I didn't want to walk in late, especially because I had a lot of classes that were in a big lecture hall. So I would have to open these heavy doors and so you could hear when I was coming in and you have to find a seat, you have to scoot between people. It was a lot. But I did learn eventually 
that missing some is better than just missing the whole lecture in general. At my university, they didn't take attendance, so I didn't have to go to class. So if I was late or if I overslept, I just didn't go. But I eventually got some common sense and realized that going even if you're late will make all the difference. And yes, I know it sounds self-explanatory, but you will be surprised how many people do this. I knew a lot of people who did the same thing when we were in college. All right, guys, those were my tips for succeeding in college, especially if you are a STEM major or science major specifically. The main thing to do and when you're in college and university and whatever you're doing is make sure that you are not overstressing and overworking yourself, overbooking yourself. College is very simple once you get your routine down path. There's definitely gonna be some long nights, some long days, some hard days, some days where you just wanna drop out of school, but keep pushing, you can definitely do it. Like I said, it took me a long time to get my routine down, but once I got it down, I was definitely a lot more successful than when I started. Hopefully none of these tips were confusing. I hope I explained everything really well. If you have any more questions, or you need um, me to explain a tip a different way, definitely leave it down below. I will be responding back as soon as possible. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video and my channel. I have a lot planned for 2021 in my uploads. Also, again, do not forget to look out for the digital planner that I am coming out with. It's specifically made for students and succeeding in college higher education or even high school as always thanks again for watching and i will see you guys in my next video bye